Hello you homemade Ewok dildos, Jim Sterling here and this is Flint Hook at bloody last. I've been looking forward to talking about this one. You'll notice I kickstarted it with the intro to the game. It's because I think the intro to this game is just really fucking cool. And I love the theme tune that the game has and I like the animation of that intro. So I put that in. Uh, not unconventional for the series uh, of Jim Pressions. I did that the other day with Spear of Destiny on the PS4. I don't know if you remember the intro to that one, but there's a right way to do a, a game intro and a wrong way. And me taking the stupid damage I just took there is kind of the way Spear of Destiny did their intro. Now, this is one of the very first uh, runs I ever did at this game. Hence my really not knowing what the fuck I'm doing. Um, and I kind of... I would have waited to have gotten a lot better at the game. Um, I've got various clips with me at various degrees of experience with the game. Uh, I didn't have enough, you know, passable level play to make the video yet. But I really wanted to get my thoughts out in a semi-professional capacity professional as you know this channel could get uh, just because I really really love it I really fucking I'm not good at the game I'm not good at it at all uh, I say varying degrees of experience even at my highest level play in this video it ain't great uh, so be warned ahead of time apologies for that um, but I just I, I needed to, to get the video out so I could talk about the game um, it is an indie game obviously I mean look at it um, side scroller, procedurally generated rooms, um, although not fully randomly generated, you know, it's like the Isaac thing where there are different room configurations and things, uh, different maps each time you, uh, you play through. Uh, permadeath, of course, uh, although there are some key differences uh, with regards to progress. Uh, every, basically the setup is uh, every stage of the game is you trying to get a bounty. You're hunting a particular boss, essentially. And you go through a number of different levels, picking up MacGuffins. You just gotta get enough of a certain thing to feed to your slimy compass that you have because reasons, and that'll show you the way. So it's basically complete a few levels, get to the boss. Uh, but after every boss, the levels uh, are uh, saved. You don't have to, I don't have to play through this style of ship with these exact, you know, this exact enemy roster anymore. This is me really fucking up the game really bad. Really bad. You think I'm going to get through that unscathed? Oh, oh no, I actually did get through that unscathed. I shouldn't have. Um, yeah, it's really bad gameplay, um, but it, it does get better with the, you know, the, 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 the next clip. Not this one. I needed the B-roll. I needed the B-roll. Um, but no, no, I, I really am enjoying it. You progress like that, um, but you don't have to, if you die, you don't have to, you know, fight the first boss over and over again. You can start play from the, the next set of levels to the next boss. Um, there are various unlocks. You level up uh, with each playthrough, and every time you level up, you can unlock a randomly selected perk that come to you in card packs. Uh, I was telling uh, Conrad, I was talking to Conrad Zimmerman about the game because he's the one who actually uh, uh, turned me on to it. He recommended me try it. And I was uh, saying it's got all the fun of card packs and unlocks uh, that you typically find in microtransaction games, but without any of the microtransaction bullshit. So yeah, you actually unlock card packs and things in this game, except it's all in game and you feel like they're there as actual rewards for progressing and playing the game. You know, it's not like a drip-fed loot box every two hours. Uh, it, it feels like a fucking rewarding game, and it's not asking for any more money on top of the asking price to do it. How about that? So, that's fun. Um, what else was I going to say about it? I guess there's, there's a lot to talk about with regards to the gameplay. Obviously, you're seeing me do a lot of things. I mean, fucking up is one of the things you're seeing me do there. Funnily enough, I could do this now, like, pretty easy. It's a really simple... A lot of the... And I hate to make the comparison because, you know, comparing things to Dark Souls is so fucking trite. 
but going into rooms, not so much bosses even, but rooms, uh, can feel like seeing a Dark Souls boss for the first time, where you're a little bit overwhelmed and not sure what the fuck's going on, and then the next time you face it, you're like, okay, well now I, I've seen the patterns, I know what's going on. So sometimes I get intimidated by the amount of traps in a room, not realising how simple the situation is. Uh, the other main mistake I'm making in this particular run is uh, not making enough use of slowing down time and not using the grappling hook enough um, to get, you know, when you want to feel really quite capable at the game, you are constantly using these grappling points. Uh, but it is a lot to take in when you first play the game, uh, being given the option to, uh, you know, slow down time and grapple around and be acrobatic and wall jump and... Uh, shooting, which in an unusual twist for this game, uh, you aim using the movement stick, so you are not using the right stick to aim, you're using the movement stick, which I don't know why I said it twice, that's, that was redundant. Um, which feels very weird at first until you realise how that plays into the game. Uh, once you realise that you're using that aiming method in tandem with slowing down and flippy jumping about the place like a Mortal Kombat Annihilation character, then you start to see what's going on. So, this was the last MacGuffin I needed to get to the boss um, on, on my first run. I'm not going to show you that boss fight, because if you thought that gameplay was painful, <laughs> uh, instead, uh, this is just another level from a later playthrough. I am marginally improved, because I've gotten a bit used to it. Still expect silly mistakes. If you came to this channel looking for high level play, why are you here? That's very confusing and unusual to me. But hello, you're very welcome, you won't like it here. Um, also here you're making use of the ability to stand and aim, which becomes a, a per permanent upgrade uh, pretty early on. And yeah, that's another thing to talk about, um, is Rella's uh, rewards. They're, you're rewarded at different sort of points in the game. Not only do you get these equipable perks as random unlocks, uh, there's the black market. Uh, the green things you pick up at the end of every level are basically a, a I guess this, in, in a non-monetized sense, a premium currency. Uh, a currency that you use to buy permanent upgrades for the character. Um, anything you buy with the gold you're picking up constantly within the level, that's spent during that run. And you can't take it with you when you die. So that goes on different shops you find in levels which can be used to, uh, you can buy like a shield, uh, there's a shield uh, icon in the top left next to the health, um, which will absorb a free hit for you, uh, you can buy obviously healing items, you can buy food and stuff like that, you can buy perks which have different gameplay effects, um, you know they can add to your health at the most basic thing, they can make you shoot faster, they can make you slow down more intense, you know they can slow things down further. Um, all sorts of different perks, which again, you can't take them with you when you die, if you buy them in-game with the gold. Uh, the black market will take the green tokens and give you similar, some similar perks to the stuff you can get in the game, um, and they're permanent. And you can also open up, I'm really explaining this quite badly, and that's one of the problems of totally unprepared dialogue. Um, here I am actually buying these these temporary upgrades, uh, but perks are a totally different thing. They go in perk slots, and you only got a limited amount of those slots uh, to put the cards in. Different cards take up different amounts of space, and they can be anything like what you just saw me buy there from XP uh, bonuses to this little fella, this little buddy that follows you around. There are different kinds of uh, buddies you can get. And in order to equip those, you need them, you know, you need the requisite perk slots to keep them on your character forever. Uh, if you've got them, if you've earned them with your level ups and got them in a random thing, otherwise, you're relying on chance to get them in game like this. Oh, that's some rough navigation of that area. Uh, where was I? There's, there's a lot to talk about. This game has just a lot of little fucking twiddly things that are all really simple, like. 
when you're playing in the game, but when you're describing it, it's just a lot to, to talk about. But to make a long story short, you unlock a lot of shit. I mean, that's more or less the, the be all end all of it. You get a lot of shit, and you can outfit your character with all sorts of interesting passive gear that can uh, really help the game out. Uh, it's, in that regard, it's as challenging as games that are sort of on this level, you're sort of Binding of Isaac, your Rogue Legacies, all that. Um, you know, combat can be tricky and the traps can be really challenging, uh, but it's also uh, a lot more generous with its uh, health, especially. Um, I, I hesitate to use the word more forgiving, but there's a lot, a lot of anti-frustration features evident in the game that typically aren't in place in a game like this, if that makes any sense at all to you. Um, the game really wants to be played. That's what I get from this. Uh, it's really as, as challenging and tough as that was silly. Um, that was entirely silly. <laughs> Um, as you know, the, the going back wasn't silly. I wanted to go uh, look up something because I had the, the key to spend. But what I was doing with the bouncing and the laser, I do not know. Um, mine's got a total blank again because I was commentating and also recapping at the same time, which is a nightmare. Uh, but I have stalled enough now with that affected, self-deprecating reflection to the point where I can recall what I was talking about unless I drag this bit of speech out long enough to forget again. Uh, but I was talking about how the game is, um, you know, okay, I guess forgiving is a word you could use for it. Uh, a lot of opportunities to replenish your health, a lot of opportunities to uh, uh, make up for, for mistakes. That said, the game is still challenging in that if you make enough mistakes, there will get to a point where your your ability to heal will not catch up with the health you, uh, the health you've lost and are losing. So you know you can't fuck about. As I learned after so much fucking about with the game, it took me a, quite a while just to get past the uh, the first boss, as you'll find out when you'll see what level I was when I eventually beat him. And even though there's no real gameplay value to it, and I don't normally like button mashing as a gameplay mechanic, um, fuck off with the Dynasty Warriors jokes, you know what I mean. You know, things like mash a button to open a door. Like, I find that stuff such a waste. But smashing a thing to get information from it, or in this case, get rewards and get the, um, the perks, you can get you know the perk cards from them when you level up, like, there's an actual satisfaction to that, because it helps build the anticipation it actually is like unwrapping a treat. Uh, so I included that bit just to show you what it's like when you uh, find a bounty, um, totally forgetting that I already had footage earlier of what it's like when you get a bounty. But this is the boss anyway, so this is this was my first victory against this particular boss. It's not pretty, but I win. And that's what matters at the end of the day. So this is the first boss, which is actually, um, they, they kind of tease it with a sub-boss in the game, um, which we, sh we saw in the first clip uh, that had a very similar pattern to this. So it's basically the same thing, but with the added challenge of using the hookshot to pull the bubble, the protective bubble, off of the boss's weak point. Plus you've got these starfish guys going around, and the actual character, the boss character himself, firing with his gun. So there's a lot going on. My first time fighting this, I was just lost, for, like thrown for a loop. I was like, this is too much stuff happening right now. And as you can see, I make a lot of silly mistakes, especially when I try and get bold and acrobatic. I end up whipping myself through the air into bullets and things. But it's a fun boss. I mean, ev like, Everything about the game is, even when the game's really kicked my ass, which it's quite good at doing, because even though I said it's forgiving, I am I need a lot of forgiveness <laughs> um, for all my sins. But, again, again, go off on a tangent. It's, it's like Ross Noble, the comedian Ross Noble, except where he can make it funny, I can't. 
the whole forgetting where you are. Plus, you know, he ropes that into part of a gimmick and an act, whereas I'm just genuinely, horrifically absent-minded. I can tell you about, you know, things that happened in 1997, but I can't tell you what I was talking about five minutes ago. What did happen in 1997? Uh, Britain gave Hong Kong back to China. That was a whole thing in 97. Uh, 97 may have been the year that, I forget who it was who said it, but it, um, that may have been the year that Piers Morgan was called a conniving little shit by someone. They weren't wrong, they weren't wrong back then, certainly. And the years have not been kind to Piers Morgan's brain. A conniving little shit. Um, but 1997, a lot of things happened in that year. I had a book, that's part of what helped me remember, called Have I Got 1997 For You, which was a spin-off of the TV panel quiz show, which I believe still runs to this day in the United Kingdom. Uh, Have I Got News For You? Satirical look at the week's events in Britain. It'd be meaningless to me now due to the, the cultural disconnect I have. Which, is there a term for that? Because I've been feeling a strange ennui about it. Been looking at old clips of EastEnders for a while now. Just thinking about how I had a childhood in England. I think I've talked about this in videos before. I won't go into it again here. But it's, it's often on my mind. I reflect on it often. And it makes good padding when I've really, uh, you know, said my piece about a boss fight that's just going on a long time. Longer than it should take. But that's more on me than anything else. That was, that was, again, I mean, I immediately ruined it by jumping into a bullet, but that was actually an example of what a good player might do in a game like this. I don't know if you saw it where, like, I jumped over the bullet, but I wasn't going to make it, so I slowed down time and hookshot it to clear the bullet. But that's the kind of stuff you want to be doing. So, I hope I did a good job of explaining why I like the game. I didn't do a good job of explaining the game. And I haven't done a good job of visually demonstrating the game, because, you know, if, if there is a chance of me getting any better at it, I didn't want to wait that long to be able to talk about it. But there will be a review, once I've gotten a lot further um, than, than I have gotten, uh, there will be a review on theunposition.com. I've got to get Outlast 2 out of the way first. Uh, that video is still available if you want to see the new impressions of that. Uh, but like I said, I've been taking things a little bit easy, a little bit more laid back lately, just because of the amount of the amount of shit of last year and then the huge rush of work I had on uh, at the beginning of this year. So try not to work too hard, but still doing the work. I mean. Look at yesterday's gym position, you can't argue I didn't put in the legwork. Which about the only legwork I'd do. That was a fat joke, but you can have, you can keep that one. So yeah, these are the, you know, leveling up, you get these card packs that have perks in that you can equip if you've got the slots. Uh, make sure to go to the black market and spend the green tokens on new slots, as well as other things. That's Flint Hook. the video's over. Uh, I try and wrap up before the footage runs out, but I didn't. Now it's a black screen. I guess I should end the video. Bye.